On the news tonight, Code of Condor Tribunal fixes February 4 for Justice Water on Nogan's trial. And in business, federal government launches intervention projects to boost indigenous oil sector. And on the foreign scene, European Union declares Juan Guado as Venezuela's interim president. Good evening and thank you for joining the Super Screen TV flagship news, reaching you live from our studio here in the commercial capital. I am Kiruka Ibe and now let's take a look at the stories in full. The Code of Condor Tribunal CCT has fixed February 4th for the resumption of alleged non asset declaration trial against the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Water Onoge. In a statement, Bava Head Code of Condor Tribunal Ibrahim Al Hassan said the decision was reached secret to a correspondent from Code of Condor Bureau applying for the resumption of the trial of the case. Al Hassan said the case came up for hearing of pre preliminary objection to the jurisdiction of the tribunal on 28th of January 2019, but the tribunal could not proceed due to the pendency of the case at the Court of Appeal. The head of CCT stressed that they urged the Honorable Tribunal to give them a date for resumption of the trial subject to the convenience of the tribunal. And in the related development, a non-governmental organization, Youth Anti-Corruption Network, has called on President Muhammad Dubari to lift the unconstitutional suspension of the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Onoge. Coordinator of the group Ovo, Ovo Otarigo made, the, made this known at a press briefing in Abuja, demanding for the immediate resignation of the CJN, considering the moral and ethical implication of his failure to completely declare his assets. Otarigo, while condemning the decision of President Buhari to suspend the CJN just days away from the general elections, said the action, if not checked, makes mockery of his fight against corruption in Nigeria. Reject in its totality the excuse given by Justice Onoge as it concerns his failure to completely declare his assets as required by the law. A judge must not be corrupt. A judge must not be partial. Even as innocent omission or ignorance remains inexcusable in the eyes of the law, we therefore call on all concerned agencies to investigate the facts behind Chief Justice Onoge and his finances. And if found guilty, he should be subjected to the procedure dictated by our laws. But until then, he is presumed innocent until proven guilty. And in another development, the Arua Consultative Forum, ACF, has thrown its support to the suspension of the Chief Justice of Nigeria, CJN Justice Water Onoge, from office by President Muhammadu Buhari. The ACF, in a communique signed by its Secretary General Anthony Sani in Kaduna, condemned the conduct of Justice Onoge, particularly his refusal to step aside and allow due process of the law to take its course. The Northern Group said by his action, the former CJN has created the impression that his personal interest in the matter supersedes that of the judiciary and the nation. The firm further called on law enforcement agencies to carry out their personal duties, their professional duties rather, against the CJN in a manner that will not give room to partisanship. And the All Progressives Congress, APC, says it will not get tired of reminding the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and its presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar, that Nigerians will never return to the era of unbridled corruption and impunity. National Publicity Secretary of the APC, Lanre Isa Onulu, who made the assertion in Abuja, expressed shock over Atiku and Obi's confession that their administration will grant amnesty to looters following the aftermath of their participation at the Wednesday night town hall meeting titled The Candidate. It is disturbing that Atiku and his running mate, Mr. Peter Obi, could both play first the national and indeed global audience, boasting that the future of our country indeed belongs to the looters. As a matter of fact, 
Alaji Atiku repeatedly told a bewildered nation that those who caused poverty, unemployment, poor infrastructure, and misery for many Nigerians under his watch as the vice president we will be left to enjoy our commonwealth as long as they turn in part of what they have stolen. This, no doubt, must have gladdened the hearts of all the enemies of this country. In a bare-faced manner, the PDP's presidential candidate, Alaji Atiku, promised to roll out the red carpet for people who have wickedly teamed up with him under PDP to ruin our country. Onilu also accused the PDP presidential candidate of looting the resources meant to build roads, rails and ports provide regular and stable electricity. What I see when Atiku speaks is somebody who has penchant, unquenchable penchant, for manipulating the system for personal gains who shamelessly come bare-faced openly to all as Nigerians to say exactly I'm coming back to do and repeat the same thing. And who has told us in clear terms that he's coming to enrich his own friends, which is not news to us, which is what he has done before, which is what he is promising to do again, who has sold several national assets in the past, underpriced them, undervalued them, and sold them off to his friends for peanuts, incompetent friends, friends with no expertise, with no resources to invest in such enterprises. And ahead of the 2019 general elections, with less than days to the presidential election, the All Progressives Congress APC has urged electorate to vote wisely and embrace a violent free election. The party's governorship candidate in Lagos State, Babajide Samwolu, and the Director General of Presidential Support, Moshut Savado, made the appeal in Lagos State. We're about peace campaign. We're about ensuring that one vote counts. We're about ensuring that everybody conducts himself or herself in an orderly manner that is free of rancor, that is free of any form of violence. We are about peace. And you've seen all around us today. This is the second campaign we're coming to today. We've, we've gone through an Arewa campaign, which had well over 10,000 Arewa um, ethnic nationals, right? And everything went peaceful. There is no other language they can use to, to change a government or to retain a government rather than having their PVC. There is no other language to make any change. Therefore, everybody must have their, uh, their PVC to resist any change in Lagos and in Federal. They must not fight anybody. They must do everything peacefully to make sure their vote count properly. At the political gathering where support items were launched, Moshud Salvador reiterated his commitment to achieving over 1 million votes for APC. We have educated them enough, the type of finger they will use, and I am going to embark, I'm going to embark on rigorous campaign, street to street campaign. I am, because when I make promise, my promise is always my bond. I said it in Agege, they thought I was joking. I will do whatever I have possible to make sure I achieve having over one million for your APC. Electoral Commission INEC has maintained its earlier decision to stop the All Progressives Congress APC from representing candidates for the forthcoming general elections in Zamfara State. The Commission's National Chairman of Informa on Information and Voter Education Committee, Festus Okoye, made the clarification in a statement issued on Wednesday. According to Okoye, INEC has approved the final list of candidates for the governorship, state assembly and FCT area council elections scheduled to hold on March 2, 2019. He also said that there are about 
1,066 candidates for the governorship elections, 14,583 for the state assembly elections, and 806 for the FCT area council elections, broken down into 105 chairmanship candidates and 701 councillorship candidates. The Chairman Senate Committee on Petroleum Downstreet Kabiru Marafa has commended the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, for maintaining its earlier position on the rejection of all Zamfara APC candidates. Briefing journalists today in Abuja, Senator Marafa said INEC, after studying the two conflicting judgments delivered on the matter, decided to maintain its earlier position that the party did not conduct any primary whatsoever. Marafa, who said the commission did the right thing, also agreed with the judgment of Justice Ijoma Ojuku, who ruled that the INEC acted within its powers by refusing to accept list of candidates from a faction of APC in Zamfara State. I was to tell the court that, uh, look, we have problems, so give them for the people as much variety as possible by allowing APC to fill the candidates. If the court agrees, that will enrich the political space, the choice, and everything, if the court agrees. I hope and I'm optimistic the court will agree because that is also justice and fairness, okay? Now, but in the event that didn't happen, that is why I told you, I understood the APC leadership very, very well. I will support APC leadership, even if they were going to send the Aries candidate that, you remember, day before yesterday, if they say, that we are going to send the IRS candidates. I would not fight Oshimole over that. I said it here. Huh? But I would not participate in that thing. I would not. Because APC, as a party, is in the business of contesting elections. OK? So if they go into their business, you can't fault them. <laughs> but me, as a politician, I am in the business of protecting my constituents. So if the people you are presenting are not what we want, I would not follow you to the battlefield. I wouldn't. And I can assure within the parties that are contesting in Zamfara, there are some good men and women that we can trust. Marafa also said the development has shown that INEC will conduct credible, fair and transparent polls just as he acknowledged the commission to always stand by the truth no matter who is involved. Opposition political parties have filed a suit at the Federal High Court in Abuja asking that President Mohamed Dubari be declared medically unfit to seek re-election. The First National Spokesperson Coalition of United Political Parties, Imo Gochinere, who disclosed this at a press conference in Abuja, said the coalition also sought an, for an order directing President Buhari to make public the result of his medical examination. Describing the step as a patriotic decision, he said re-electing the president would only empower Kabab members who have hijacked the presidency to rule for another four years. The Federal Road Safety Corps, FRSC, says it would certify all vehicles to be used in conveying sensitive election materials in the state as from February 5th. FRC Sector Commander Peter Oke, who made the assertion in Oshogbo, said measures are being put in place to avoid any breakdown or delay during the elections. According to Oke, the command would work with the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to ensure the such vehicles are in good condition. He also said the command is working with all the sister agencies to ensure that the elections are conducted peacefully in the various states. The eight-member ad hoc committee set up by the Senate to work on the minimum wage amendment bill sent to it on Wednesday last week by President Muhammad Dubari has yet to sit. According to reports, Senator Olushala Adeyeye led committee is yet to hold a meeting because six out of the eight members were engaged in political activities in their respective constituencies. Adeya said the ongoing campaigns across the country has made it difficult to mobilize committee members. Meanwhile, the Senate has mandated the committee to deliberate on the bill within two weeks and ensure that the report is ready before Tuesday, February 19, 2019, when it is expected to resume from its ongoing recess. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has filed fraud charges against the SAC Secretary to the Governor 
government of the Federation, Baka Lawal, and the former Director General of the National Intelligence Agency, NIA, Ayodele Oke, and wife, Folashade. The anti-craft agency filed 10 counter-fraud against Lawal and five others, including his company, Rohal Vision Engineering Limited, before the High Court of the Federal Capital Territory in Abuja on Wednesday. You will recall that President Muhammad Dubari had in October 2017 sacked Lawal Anoke following a report of investigations by a panel handed by Vice President Yemi Oshibajo into allegations of fraud leveled against him. And the bid on medical health matters, the Joint Health Sector Union Johesu has issued a threat to take industrial actions over what it describes as indifference on the part of the federal government to resolve their labor dispute. Johesu's president, Josiah, who disclosed this in a media briefing, said the health workers threatened to resume their industrial action any time from now. The development comes two weeks after the union issued a 15-day ultimatum asking the government to implement a new salary adjustment structure. They also want the government to pay all salaries of members within, withheld before April and May last year. And coming up on the news tonight, federal government launches intervention project to boost indigenous oil sector. There's a more to come in business just after the break. Welcome back, and if you have just joined us, you're watching Super Screen TV flagship news and now talking business. Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Ibe Kachuku, has launched the Project 100, which is aimed at creating enabling environments for the production of local content and transforming indigenously owned companies in the country to large scale players in the oil and gas sector. Kachikwe, who launched the project in Abuja, said the launch of the project through the Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring Board, NCDMB, will stand as the sector's industry intervention to identify and nurture indigenous-owned companies with a view to improving local production and create more jobs. At every stage of life that you go through, one of the things that keeps you going is Nigerians believe so much in themselves, and it doesn't assess us of the African progress of the African issues. It is the self belief that we can make things happen. Mm -hmm. Nothing must kill that spirit. That spirit must continue, and uh, all of us have a collective responsibility to ensure that we nurture that spirit, not just amongst the first uh, of this light age, but for by friends of the younger ones who are not coming. Uh, and I think we'll borrow that from our founding fathers who fought for independence. And that energy must continue. That energy must be founded on unity, on collaboration, on brotherhood, and on respect for the fundamental rights of every Nigerian citizen. This is what the logic is about. Project 100 is founded on the logic that Nigerians have the capacity to lead this industry, to build the best FPSOs, to build the best platforms, to build the best data plans, uh, to run the best banks, to run the best communication to produce made in Nigeria cars, to go to the moon soon, to fly Nigerian planes. It's the belief that we can do it. That's the logic of Project 100. So the NCDMB is expected to help in the area of capacity building of staff of the companies to make impact in the economy in terms of technological developments and wealth creation. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has published the guidelines on banknotes, fitness and tax or deposit money banks, microfinance banks and other cash handlers to comply with the directive. The CBN indicated that all unfit notes should be returned to its coffers for, the stru for destruction or recycling. The guidelines directive issued by the Currency Operations Department of the CBN was co-signed by Director Currency Operations Department Priscilla Eleje and Deputy Governor Operations Fola Shodu Shonubi. The Banknotes Fitness Guidelines, among other things, stipulates the quality standards and guidelines for banknotes production and recycle. 
And in Edo State, the Edo State government has promised to build more affordable houses for its people. According to the executive director for Edo Development and Property Agency, Isokon Omo, this was one of the cardinal promises made by the governor, Godwin Obaseke led administration when it assumed office. Isokon and said through strategic partnership with private sector, the government will achieve more than 1,400 houses in the state. We're working in the whole spectrum of housing where we're delivering from low income, affordable, medium income, high end, so that whoever comes to Benin or Edo State as it were to do business will be able to find what they're looking for. People who have their families here who want to provide accommodation for them will be able to do that. People who come at the end of the year, maybe they live in a diaspora, they want something that is not a hotel that they can live in and eventually keep as a home, we will be able to provide to them. And they put are coming here to just do investment and go and looking for halfway homes, we'll be able to provide for them. We're also looking at hostel accommodation, we're looking at industrial accommodation for people that are working in the manufacturing and production industries to be able to provide for them. So what we want to do in Edo is when you come to Edo, you should see a home there that fits you. Mm. A home where your children will be able to thrive. So we're not just building the houses, we're building communities where we have both the leisure, education, health, security, everything provided so that you're able to thrive and live at peace because everything you need is within those kind of environments. You're going to see a lot of uh, transformation in terms of infrastructure as well. You've heard about the the uh, very uh, uh, extensive road that has been awarded, the Bini Abraka Road, which is going to cost the government, the state government, in co collaboration with uh, MDDC, uh, about uh, 21 billion naira. That the largest contract that this state, you know, even when it was Bendel, you know, has, has ever awarded over 106 kilometers uh, length of road. You, you've heard of the Ubama Baru, is currently under uh, construction. You've heard about the PZ of Kabe Road under construction. You've heard about uh, St. Xavier Road under construction. You have, there, there are about 140 other roads that are not big and major roads or that are under construction as we speak. And, and, and you know, it's going to intensify. Most of them are going to be concluded in the first quarter of, of this year. Special advisor to the Governor on Media and Communication Strategy, Crusoe Osage, also said the government is doing its best to ensure that the development of the state, a view supported by others. It's a welcome development. But there are some strategies uh, after their retirement, they can't be able to get the house home their own. Now, with this development, at the end of their service, the government, they will have the house of their own, be happy at their own age. And it's a good thing because I would like other governments or federal government to emulate this. Because you can't be working for government at the end of it all. You retire and be crying. It's not a bad initiative. And the proceeds from it should not go into uh, just a private pocket. You understand, it should go to government cover. If that is the case, you can see that so many people who you know, like especially uh, uh, public servants, who never had anything, without being able to have a house of their own. That's a very good idea, provided able to keep, keep to the promise that they meet with. Still ahead in the news, European Union declares Juan Guaido as Venezuela's interim president. These are more to come on the foreign scene and sports just after the break. Stay with us.